Hey, joining us is Anitra Goddard from Sun and Fun. She's with the short takeoff and landing. Uh, it's a brand new thing that you guys are doing out there for Sun and Fun. Talk to me a little bit about this. So this is our actually our fourth year, but Sun and Fun has really appreciated what this brings to general aviation, and they've really empowered me to do something really spectacular with it this year. And it's a short takeoff and landing competition at Sun and Fun, it's a demo, but there is a series that goes all around the country and you have all these pilots that um, mod up their airplanes and go do these competitions. Anitra, I want you to talk a little bit about, you know, Sun and Fun is about the best of the best. And we've got pilots coming in from all over. Tell me a little bit about the competition. So we have pilots coming of all the way from Alaska, Canada, out west to compete in this. And these are the top of the competition series that you would see on YouTube. And they're coming here to put on a, a fantastic show. And, and the great thing that I love about the Stole is that the general population that comes out and they watch it, they look at it, they become inspired because it's attainable, unlike the big military jets and the aerobatic pilots you go you watch Stoll and it inspires people to go get to go fly talk a little bit about its origins it's really born out of necessity if it was right absolutely so the competitions actually started about 20 years ago but that was born out of the backcountry bush pilots you've some people have seen the show um, Alaskan Bush Pilots and actually uh, the plane behind us belongs to to one and uh in the Yukon and in Alaska, a lot of places, there's only two ways you can get there, and that is by air or by horse. So these, a lot of these airplanes are work horses. So let's talk a little bit about the competition itself. Short takeoff and landing is exactly what they say it is, and, and for the general public to get an understanding about it. Talk about distances, what they're, what they're doing when they take off and when they land. Okay, so it is, uh, I'd say it is a spot landing and a short landing and takeoff competition. There is a start line, just as like you would have for a drag race. The pilots, they line up their main gear, which is the big tire, um, put their tires on the line. They are released, and what they do is they take off as short as they can. They fly the pattern. They come around. They have to aim for the line. But if they land before the line, it's considered a scratch, and they are DQ'd. So you have to hit your mark and stop as short as possible. And, uh, and then the pilot with the combined shortest distance wins. So we were just at competition last weekend, and I think our shortest combined distance was 34 feet. Combined. Wow. Combined. Take off and landing. He had a 10-foot landing. That is crazy. Now, here's what I'm hearing. Um, they kind of put you in charge of a new area. You're, you're working in an area and creating something from, from nothing, really, that uh, uh, as far as sun and fun goes. Talk to me a little bit about that. I am so excited about the Bushwheel Base Camp. This is the first year. Uh, anybody who's been to Sun and Fun knows that you have the Warbird ramp, you've got seaplanes, you've got vintage. So for the first year, Sun and Fun has given us the freedom and the space to have a bush planes area. So all of the bush planes, like the one you see here with the big tires and uh, the markings and, and equipped to go in the backcountry, are all going to be in one area. So how can folks find that during Sun and Fun? And tell me a little bit about the days of competition. Okay, well, the days of competition are Tuesday, Thursday and Friday during the fly-in and we fly at twilight so 7 p.m. out at the grass field in Paradise City and anybody who wants to come visit these pilots that are competing and see all of the other bush planes that are flying in from all over the country all you have to do is get on the blue tram route and get off at tram stop 12 it is it the stop is right in front of our area so from what I understand you set it up so I'm going to go up in this uh, here shortly. Tell me what to expect. So what we're going to do is Keith Lang, he's the pilot of this uh, particular airplane. We are going to show you a regular takeoff and landing on a grass strip. And then we're going to stage it to where you're going to experience what a short takeoff and landing is like we would do in competition. And then we're going to depart and we're going to take you off and actually do an off airport landing at a proper, private property down in Mulberry. 
So I'm a little bit nervous about this. Should I be nervous? Well, I mean, we were going to put Mark Jackson in here, and he chose to give it to you, so I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know whether to be safe or sorry. <laughs> no. Keith is an amazing pilot, and you're in great hands. All right. So let's do this, can we? Absolutely. Let's do it. Joining us from Lone Wolf Stoll, he is Keith Lang, and oh my goodness, uh, they didn't warn me about that, but that was that was cool. Yeah, that, that was a lot of fun. It yeah. kind of gives you a rough idea of my general day. Yeah. That's what it does. So how do you even, how does one even start this? Well, mine kind of goes back. I, I grew up in these planes as a kid, so... Um, we had family that lived next door. My dad flew. Um, I, I was in a plane just like that, a little green one, that, at, at age six, and uh, flying. So it's, uh, it starts when you're young and just kind of works your way up. But uh, it gets in your blood. You're kind of screwed. Yeah. So one thing that you had mentioned, uh, this is a way of life across America, Canada, and Alaska, you know, farmers doing this. Talk a little bit about what we were talking about in the plane, you know, uh, you know ranchers taking this up and, and perhaps finding, uh, you know, a calf, something along that way. Talk to me a little bit about that. Right. It, it's really a modern cowboy sport. I mean, really, that's what it is. But people um, all over the United States and, you know, of course, South America, they, these people fly these aircraft for a living. They use them utilitarian. Uh, like I mentioned, I got a bunch of friends in Nebraska, and and uh, and they use theirs, you know, just as if they'd use the horses. But uh, you know, they're some of these areas in Texas and in that area, they uh, they're running three, four, ten, twelve thousand acres, and you can't ride a horse that much, but yeah. you can you can certainly come in, check your stock, and and do what you got. And in Alaska, you know, and it, it it's a um, it's an absolute up there for us. That's the only way we can really get around because airports spotted with with uh, airports, and uh, if you got a a good airplane that can fly high or fast, you land at those airports. If you have to work for a living like I do up there, then at that point you got to take what you've got, and that's a a gravel bar, a grass strip, anything that you can land within 150 feet and take off with it. You know, I want to. I want you to because I don't think you know everybody's like yeah he came in from Alaska probably trailered the plane down let's talk sheer numbers because you flew this in from Alaska mm -hmm. at a certain height talk to me about the gallons of fuel that you hold give me the the total rundown on what it takes to get this from Alaska to Florida oh yeah it's uh and th I've made those trips four different times already so taking airplanes up and taking airplanes back. So um, the last time that we brought this bird down, uh, it was 46 hours straight flying. We left uh, Wasilla, came through, and uh, of course up there the fires have been really bad through Canada. Uh, in the last couple of years, Alaska got hit until we start getting wet again. But um, we were, or I was, flying sometimes above the road, maybe 100 feet because that was the only visibility that I had. 
Um, you couldn't go up any higher than four or five thousand most of the time, and there was a couple times that I got in it and I I wasn't sure if I was going to come out because the terrain was coming up on me. I just punched it and just went straight up because these airplanes are not set up to be IFR. So you know I follow railroads. That's kind of the yep. concept. Yep. That's that's our version of IFR, and that's how it was coming down. We had noticed before we went up in the flight, you were doing some adjustments to the prop itself. Talk to me a little bit about that and how that makes a difference in the competition. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the uh, the prop that I run is a Sensenik prop. Uh, it's called Ground Adjustable, and it's really one of the, the best props out there. I've, I've tried just about every one. And I'll tell you what, it pulls like a racehorse. But what it is, it's it's an adjustable system that they've got, and you use a pin system. And what you do is you lighten up the blades, and you can adjust the pitch to be able to get you off the ground faster. So either you want to get off the ground fast, or you want to be able to cruise in the air as fast as you can. Now, unfortunately, it has the opposite effect when you when you pitch them that way. Yeah. You know, at cruise, you know, it takes a lot of runway to get up. That's just kind of how it works because it's not grabbing a lot of air like it is now. So I'd set it up for uh, kind of short takeoffs. Uh, we don't have any wind here today. In fact, the little tiny bit we got I noticed was uh, quartering. So, um, you know, you take advantage of what you got. You try and uh, get, your, get your nose into the air and take off as quick as you can. That's how it works. Let's talk a little bit about the sport itself. If they come out and see us during, uh, during uh, sun and fun, what can the folks expect? Well, we have got at that setup that Anitra has been uh, working her butt off, uh, Bushwheel Base Camp, uh, she calls it. Uh, <laughs> we have got some of the best pilots in the world coming in. These are stole pilots, short takeoff and landing. Um, Dan Reynolds is a good friend of mine. He lives up in Canada. Uh, we've got uh, gentlemen that live down here, Warren, and we've got other guys that live up in Georgia. But these are guys that that have been flying airplanes, they know their airplanes, and they are going to show some really short takeoffs and some really short landing, especially if the wind pops up, because we live by the wind. Yeah. And it's it's going to be an amazing show. You know, being a Harley guy, we, we step back and look at the knuckleheads, the panheads, the, the, the precursors to the Milwaukee eights. And I think people don't realize these planes and their age. Talk to me a little bit about how old this plane is. Yeah, this this here is my workhorse, and it is a stock 1956 Piper Super Cub, 150 horse. Um, and uh, of course, you know, we annual these planes every year. We make sure that they're safe to fly. So it's it was built in 1956, but it still holds the standards as, as if it was a new airplane. And that's, that's uh, I'm a Super Cub guy. I've always been Piper guy, and there's a lot of guys that fly Cessnas and different airplanes, but this is my go-to bird right here. <laughs> a little bit earlier, there was a plane coming across, and all the pilots come out here, and they're like, uh, uh. it was like Tim the Tool Man. It is, it, it is a... Um, as we were talking up in the plane, it's kind of a, it's kind of a family-based thing as far as you guys go. Not only competition, but also when you're working within the community. Talk to me a little bit about that, that kinship, that friendship that you guys have, not only in competition but in life. Yeah, no, it's uh, we've got a really unique group of people. Um, the guys that we fly with at National Stole. Uh, that's an event that's held. Uh, we have. 12 different uh, places will be taken off and landing short uh, throughout Virginia. That's our next one coming up after Sun and Fall demo. Um, but the guys that are involved in that uh, are unique. Uh, pilots are unique in themselves, but those these stall pilots, they're some of the best people in the world. And, you know, pilots in general are probably some of the best people I've ever met. I, I've just really never met a bad person person that that's involved in piloting um, most of them are always great and uh, for me that's the kind of people that I want to be involved with and you know the other thing that I had mentioned me being in Alaska you know this is a work plane that's all I did I've very rarely seen people most of the summer you know you fly out you land someplace you might have a lodge you might have a tent you know you deal with bears you deal with whatever you got to deal with you get the job done and you fly back out so for me to be able to have the company that I get to deal with, you know, and, and especially at these stall competitions down here, um, 
it's really a unique thing. And I, I tell you what, I wouldn't give it up if I had a chance. Well, Keith, I want to thank you for coming on and joining us and uh, look forward to the competition at Sun and Fun. Oh, yeah. It's going to be tough and brutal. You know, we, uh, we all love each other, but I tell you what, when it comes down to competition, we all want to beat each other. That's how it is. We'll talk smack. You'll see some of that, too. If you enjoyed this interview and want to watch more Sports Central, click the video below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.